Dr. Palmjeet Parma. Question number 12. My question is to the Minister of Research, Science and Innovation. What is her target for government research and development spending over the next three years to help her achieve the coalition government's goal of spending 2% of New Zealand GDP on research and development? Mr. Speaker. Dr. Megan Woods. Thank you. All government expenditure on research, development and innovation over the next three years will be part of a wider plan to reach a target of an economy-wide expenditure on R&D of 2% of GDP over the next two years. It is our objective that a high proportion of the growth necessary to achieve this will come from increased business expenditure on R&D, because ours is especially low by OECD standards. But we recognise that businesses need support to do this, and that's why we're committed to expenditure on an R&D tax credit, and we remain committed to increasing overall investment in New Zealand's research, science and innovation system. The speaker. What will be the government's share of her 2% of GDP target? Mr Speaker. Currently, business expenditure makes up around 55% of our total R&D spend, which is extremely low compared to OECD average of 68%. Our plan is to put an R&D tax credit in place so we a, can increase... A, a point of order, the Hon. Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, um, I have a genuine interest in this topic. And uh, I was listening to the question, which I understood well, was well, in relation no, no, to the, the government. Member, member will resume his seat. He, the, the member cannot have a point of order until the minister has finished her answer. The Honourable Simon Bridges will stand with draw and apologise. Draw and apologise, the point, point of order. Now, the, the, the member is not going to relitigate the, point, the ruling I've just made? Well, uh, point of order, I, I, I think it might point be order, safer speaker. if we let the minister finish her answer. Oh, the point of order, Mr. Speaker. A point of order, the Honourable Simon. The Bridges. issue is, I don't want to fall foul of your other ruling that I must raise points of order at the first available opportunity. And 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 what I suggest that member do, because it's already in his inbox, is to read the ruling. Dr. Megan Woods. Point of order, Mr. I, I heard your ruling and I understand it. I, I do want to raise a point of order. Uh, in relation to what has happened, uh, but, I, but I understand I want to respect your ruling that you've also given that I should not do it at this point of time, but I do want to come back to it. So I, I'm seeing clarification, your help, frankly, to understand how I should proceed. Well, well if, if the, members, if the member um, had read the ruling, what he would have seen is that it is inappropriate for him to relitigate it now. If he, if he thinks I have made an inappropriate ruling, then he should seek to talk to me about it in my office privately. The, 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 rule, the, ruling, the, ruling, is very, the ruling is very clear and it's consistent with uh, at, least, at, at least 114 years of precedent. Doc point of order. A point of order. Oh, no, sorry, before we'll have Dr Nick Smith stand with and apologise. Oh. No, the mem I withdraw and apologise. Because what you said in that ruling that was very clear was that members have a duty uh, to the public and to this House to make point of orders primarily, as I understood it, in this House. The, member will, the, now, the member will now resume his seat and, look, I don't want the primary teacher to come out of me, but, but in the end... Members are, when they're advised to read a ruling, should read the whole ruling to the end of the ruling and not quote parts of it back before they understand it. Dr Megan Woods. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I'm going to begin my answer again, if I can remember the question all the way back. The current mix of R&D spending in New Zealand is 45 per cent government expenditure with 55 uh, per cent expenditure coming from business. It is this government's intention to lift business expenditure on R&D through measures such as the R&D tax credit because that's what successful innovative countries across the OECD look like. Point of order. Are they both points of order? Oh, hey. 
The Honourable well, Mr. Speaker, um, I've listened to the answer in full. Uh, the question was in regards to what the, um, uh, what the minister is going to do in relation to government research and development. I believe the minister answered by talking about what she wanted to do in business research and development. I wonder if she could be directed to the government research and development. The, the, the minister can have another go trying to address that, that narrow briefly. Thank you. Total government funding, um, as it was put in place under the um, previous government on research and development, would put us on a track to have R&D at 0.5 per cent of R&D. Our government's intention is to raise that expenditure to get that to 2 per cent of GDP. Mr Speaker, I specifically asked for government's share of a 2 per cent of GDP target. Well, I, no, I, think, I think that was that was addressed in the earlier part of the question. It, cer it certainly was. I, there, were even, there were even numbers there. Supplementary, Mr. Speaker. So, is the minister committing that the government R&D spend will be increased from 5% of the GDP to 2% of GDP? Mr. Speaker. The coalition, the, the coalition government's agreement was never to lift government expenditure to 2 per cent of GDP. The, gov the coalition government's commitment was to lift R&D spending at both across government and for the private sector to 2 per cent of GDP. The fact that the member cannot get her head around that no, shows order, that this government... Order the member will resume her seat. That's the member had answered the question and didn't need to add anything on to the end. A point of order, the Honourable Stephen Joyce. Again, I was listening very carefully to that answer um, before the gratuitous, but, and I'm sorry, but uh, the, mem the minister has been asked what proportion in a previous supplementary will be the government, and, and, and I, she answered... Member Rajuma said, I've ruled that it's been addressed. In fact, I stopped her for over-addressing it. Now, the time... No, the time for... the. National Party has run out of supplementaries. Um, I call the, the concludes oral questions. I call on Government Order of the Day number one. Military Justice Legislation Amendment Bill, first reading.